Hello, and welcome to my Reaper tutorial on drum triggers. If you don't know what a drum trigger is, why you use them, or how to use them, then this video is for you. In the simplest terms, a drum trigger takes one sound and replaces it with another. For example, if you record a drum kit and the snare drum sounds bad or off, you can replace every instance of the snare with a sampled snare. You could, of course, do this by going in and replacing a recording of a snare at each instance, but that's insanity. That would take forever. That's where drum triggers come in. For this tutorial, I'm going to go over how to use drum triggers in Reaper, as well as demonstrate an example case of how you might use them to fix a major problem in your recording. Let's get started. Here we have the opening drums from a song I mixed recently. These drums sound fine after a bit of tweaking, but if they didn't, we could easily replace, for example, the kick drum with a sampled kick drum, or any sound really, including a VST, another kick drum, me saying the word kick. Really, you can put anything there you want, depending on your needs. But let's say we want to replace the kick with a sample. First, solo the track, just to make our lives easier. Open up the FX chain and add Regate. From the stock presets, choose stock kick to MIDI. You'll notice that the track no longer makes any sound. That's because any sound that comes through the noise gate is muted and changed into a MIDI note, specifically channel 1, note 36. You can change either of these if necessary, but for the moment, we'll leave it as is. You might notice that my gate is not triggering. That's because the incoming audio is too quiet. Move the threshold and the triggering magic happens. To put a sample on the track, you can use your favorite sampling plugin or even hardware, but today we're going to use stock Reaper plugins just so everyone can follow along. Add Resamplomatic 5000 to the FX chain. Browse to the location of the sample, wave only in this case, and load it up. You can mm -hmm, sample the sample by clicking the black button. If Regate is triggering, then you can hit play and hear your new kick drum. If the drums all play together, you might notice that the kick drum is no longer in time. This is unfortunately due to latency, and all it really means is that you should render the track before using it. Let's do that real quick. After rendering, you can align the new triggered kick with the old kick and make sure that every kick actually triggered. This is sometimes a problem with live track percussion due to the variables that go into every single drum strike. What if you don't want to mess around with samples and instead wish to use a VST drum plugin for example, Sample Tank or Superior Drummer. The steps are similar. Set up the kick to trigger. But instead of putting Resample Matic on the track, simply add your favorite drum machine. In the studio, I often use MT Power Drums a great sounding free VST that you can find online. That's essentially it. You can use Regate to trigger any percussive sound and route the MIDI note wherever you need it to go. A great example of how to use this in real life mixing is if you ever come across fast double bass kick drums. 
there are a couple of problems inherent to properly capturing double bass kick drums. The first is that the left foot and the right foot often hit at different velocities, creating a lopsided sound to the drums. The second is that the faster the kick drums hit, the more likely your wonderfully tuned kick sound just turns to mush. Maybe you're recording in a $10,000 a day studio and this isn't a problem for you. And you're probably not watching my video on drum triggers. But if you record in a small space, all that bass gets mm -hmm, kicked around, resulting in a less than appealing sound. Look at this kick I recorded. Notice that the right foot hits significantly harder than the left and no amount of compression is going to make that sound steady. So let's trigger it. Unlike the previous method, we have to think a little outside the box to get these kicks triggered. They are simply too fast and too lopsided for a simple regate trigger. Try it. Set up the regate drum trigger and see if you can find the right settings. You'll probably have to adjust the hold and release on the trigger. If you can get it the first time around, great. If not, try this workaround instead. First, normalize the track. This makes it easier to work with, and the volume of the original track won't matter after it's been triggered. Next, slow your tempo to half and set up the drum trigger. You can put your sample or VST drum following it. Try to get every kick to trigger, but don't be anal about it. Spend a couple of minutes adjusting the settings until you're getting most or all of them. Next, insert a new track. Arm that track. Right click on the arm button and choose record output MIDI. Drag the I.O. icon from the drum track to this new MIDI track. Choose Audio None, MIDI All. Next, and this is important, turn off any VST or sampler you have in the drum track's FX chain. Now, record that MIDI for the length of the double bass. Now, you have a MIDI track of all, or most, of the double bass hits, and best of all, they are all exactly the same velocity, which is really the only way double bass sounds good. You can open up the MIDI track, drag notes around, add notes, remove notes, whatever you need. My personal motto is that there's no such thing as cheating in the studio. Whatever you can do to make your sound or your client's sound as good as possible is what you should do. Once you've got your final drum sound, whether it's double bass or not, you should always render it to reduce the risk of latency. But whether you render or not, you now have a new track of kicks or farts or cat meows, whatever sample you triggered, and you process it just like any other track. If you triggered kick drums, for example, I recommend rolling off the high end using re-EQ because sampled kick drums are usually so much prettier and fuller than anything we can record in our home studios or practice rooms. If you like the video, like and subscribe for more. Leave a comment below telling me how you want to use drum triggers. If you have any questions or problems, I'm happy to help. Until next time.